Hey, guess what, everybody? Go listen to the Break It Down show. This is Ashley Mary Nunes, and you're listening to the Break It Down show. And now, the Break It Down show with John and Pete. We're in the beautiful office of Hill Dog Productions, mm-hmm. Hilliard Guests, the home studio of the Screenwriter's Rant Room. And Hill was gracious enough, as he always is, but this time around he was gracious enough to host our podcast this afternoon with Ashley here in uh, on the lot in uh, beautiful Hollywood, right upstairs from uh, a bunch of construction work, which may or may not get noisy. So if we get noisy, sorry everybody, but it uh, shouldn't last long and it shouldn't be too 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 bad. Hi Ashley. Hello. Hey, how are excited, you guys? Man. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. We got Benicia in the house. Yeah. Yes, representing. Yes. <laughs> wow. So you uh, moved down here. When did you move down here? Um, I moved down here about five years ago. I was kind of um, for a while there for the last or two years before that. I was commuting back and forth every two weeks. Wow. And um, I was working as a probation counselor in the Bay Area, Contra Costa mm-hmm. County. And um, when I came here, I kind of made the transition because I started working on Hollywood Boulevard dressed up as a Wonder Woman nice. while I was here. And then I'd go back and work as a probation counselor for two weeks. And then I'd do that for like the past, you know, two years. And then finally, um, my brother's roommate moved out and I kind of said this was the time. And my son started school, kindergarten, so it was just perfect timing. All right. So there are two ways that people get the show. They go to our website mm-hmm. and they listen to the show straight from our website. If they do that, they'll see your picture. Oh, awesome. We have subscribers on iTunes who just get the show piped right to their phone and they don't mm-hmm. see the pictures. Yes. So if you don't see the pictures, Ashley is smoking hot oh. and net. <laughs> so oh. if she says she was in costume as Wonder Woman... She belongs in that Wonder Woman costume. Yeah, you noticed. Oh. Yeah, right. So how's it been since you got here? Um, I absolutely loved it, and I wish that I would have made this move a lot sooner. But everything happens for a reason, right? Yeah. Yeah, in its own time, right? Mm-hmm. Now, we also have our uh, musical director, Corey Jacobs. He's just sitting quietly uh, back there, but I see him over there nodding. So if you, you have a comment, chime in, Corey. Comment. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a comment? Comment. Yeah. So uh, Corey moved here. I have one too. Oh, so does he. <laughs> Man, chime in, people. The 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 transition down here from the Bay Area is a big move for a lot of people. And actually, Corey moved down here not long after high school. Mm-hmm. And when you move down here, all of you people who have moved down here from the Bay Area, <laughs> you know it's a transition, but you still kind of keep ties up there. Oh yeah. And everybody up there is rooting for you. And there's a whole dynamic about how Ashley moved down. She made the move. And then, you know, you have, I don't know if you have a lifeline or what, but you got a crew of people up there who are going, she's doing it. She's doing it. Did you feel that? Absolutely. Especially when we had our um, San Francisco premiere of Mm, All Through the House. Yeah. I was overwhelmed with the amount of support that we had from our family and friends that came to the show. So absolutely. I feel it. And you always remember where you came from. Sure. When I was working, it was really hard because I have an eight-year-old son now, and at the time he was a toddler when, or baby toddler when I was working, and the more I kept going to work and just being drained, because I worked in a juvenile hall, so it was very draining, and when I would come home to my son, I would be really tired, and I didn't feel I was giving that attention to him, and he's, I mean, at the age that he was, he needed that attention. Sure. So, it was very draining and the more I came here and seen Hollywood and you know I always knew what I wanted to do while I was growing up right and I was it was just time. born this way yeah. <laughs> so so was your brother yes <laughs> have we mentioned that your brother's director movie maker Todd Nunes also yes from- of all through the house and yes. many more to come yeah. <laughs> yeah he's been on our show about 10 episodes back so even if you weren't going to be an actress he was going to make you one yeah I mean I was I was born a Wonder Woman scream queen yes <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, what? Which came first? I mean, you were born Wonder Woman, Scream Queen. He was born a director of of uh, all things scary and horror. Yes. I mean, that works out so wonderfully. Who was first? Well, as far as Wonder Woman and Scream Queen, or my brother? Yeah. I mean, oh, Todd, absolutely. Oh, okay. I mean, he was you know born before me, uh-huh. obviously, and. Uh, no, he he knew what he wanted to do when he was like in the fifth grade. Oh, <laughs> so, uh-huh. 
So, and when I came into the picture, I mean, I literally came out of the womb with Wonder Woman underoos. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was Wonder Woman ever since. Um, but Todd would always have me involved with his, um, you know, productions that he had mm -hmm. uh, going when he was like in school. Uh, he would always include me, whether if I was, you know, a, a little kid that was right. like screaming or if I was like the little... Uh, lion that would be like creeping out of like you know, something that <laughs> stuff animal you. that would come mm -hmm. to life. You yeah. lose me. So I remember. I mean, I remember people jumping out of the windows. I remember pulling up to the car with my mom, and he'd had people hanging from like this, you know, the second floor of the windows. <laughs> so he so was no a, limitations. Yeah, you were a person who needed an outlet, and mm -hmm. he was a person who could exploit someone who needed an outlet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're gonna do your own stunts. I don't even know what stunts are. <laughs> Don't do it. I'll show you. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll show you. I'll just Hang on to this window edge. Well, I <laughs> scream. I also have a track back background. I ran track for uh, 15 years competitively. Oh, wow. So I went to college and ran in college. What events too. did you run? I did the 400 hurdles. Oh, you're tough. Yes. Wow, yes. that's woman business there. I, I my coach is tiny. That means yeah. you can fly. Yeah, I'm Wonder Woman. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah, I did the 400 um, hurdles, and um, my coaches would always put me in the 400 to warm up for the 400 sure. hurdles, and I do the mile relay also. Huh, that's not so. messing around. Did you run the 800 at all? Sometimes, only in, in uh, preseason to okay. kind of warm up. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we trained a lot, like distance wise, we sure. trained a lot like the 800 meter runners. Yeah. You know, That's the get, hardest race they make right there. Oh, yeah. Because you can maybe out tough a 400 meters, but there's no more, there's not enough tough to get to 800. It's oh, crazy. no. It, it wasn't my, my best, but I, I'm sure if I trained for it, I would oh, have you, been okay. Yeah. But um, hurdles was my thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> Hurdles. Yeah, I did a steeplechase in high school a little bit. Oh, and sweet. when you get to that fourth or fifth time going over, uh -huh. like at first you're like, this is easy. This uh -huh. is easy. And then that fifth one, you're like, oh, I hope I'll make it. I, I hope I'll make it. You know what? The, the steeplechase was one of my favorite races to watch. Oh, it's crazy. Um, it's a lot of strength um, yeah. and endurance and also speed, too. It's crazy. So, I mean, I've always thought, I'm like, you know what? I went to Sac City and ran there. And at the time, there was no woman that ever ran the steeplechase. And I was thinking of just running it just so I can have the record. Nice. <laughs> and wow. then I'm like, I'd have, I'd be on that top 10 list for like, you know. With all <laughs> of you. Yeah. <laughs> I was That's thinking funny. of doing it, but I never did. And I wish I did just to experience it. Yeah. I went to Sac City as well. Oh, really? Yeah, I boxed there. I was terrible, but I boxed oh, there. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. My name's not on any of the banners though. Just um, nowhere near. I am. I was on there for the 400 hurdles. I don't know if I'm still on there, but oh, probably. That's at one hard, point, that's I, I was. Event. I was on there. <laughs> I've heard Pete tell that story differently. I've heard him say, "I went to Sac City and I stood there while guys uh, put gloves on, and then when they got in the ring, I tried to uh, move away while they uh, while they hit me in a bunch of places." I had a bucket. <laughs> um, you had a bucket. <laughs> I, I carried a bucket. So, in this calling of yours, mm -hmm. what? facets of filmmaking have you um, have you touched I mean have you have you written have you have you done anything else Todd's the writer yeah I'm definitely not the writer okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that gift unfortunately but acting what always came first I touched a little bit on producing when we did um, Scary Larry which is kind of the film that got us all through the house mm, okay. um, you were executive producer right yeah um, well there was we had four producers but my main thing was acting so um, I'm, I'd say producing maybe Okay. But I, I mean, I, I'm learning a little bit about lighting and cinematography, you know, because mm -hmm. I get to kind of see it a lot more than if I were to go on to another set, um, I wouldn't have had access or, you know, to like yeah. be able to like look over the shoulder and just kind of, you know, see what it's all about. So you get to see sort of the craft through Todd's eyes. Yes. And you know Todd. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's your brother. Yes. So you get a chance to understand like probably almost even his thoughts, right? You can almost see what he's thinking. I'm oh, yeah. 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 I mean, he definitely asks me for, you know, his mm -hmm. opinion and what he thinks. And, you know, I'll say what I think or what yeah. I like. But I like being able to be there and get to see a little, little bit more than what the, the average actor gets to see when they come on set. So definitely. How much does that inform choices that you make? I mean, knowing the background of the story, knowing the process that he's gone through and kind of the changes that he's made to mm -hmm. the story as, as it's happened, how much does that inform the depth of your character? Or do you, when he deletes a page and that's it for that 
emotion from that character were going a different direction. Mm. You just also leave that behind? Or is that, like, does that develop some kind of backstory for... Some, sometimes it does develop a backstory. If something's not being used that was originally in the script, mm-hmm. um, you could still, you know, use that as your um, what your motives are underneath everything to get you, you know, to the next step, right. the next level. Yeah. Um, there's sometimes there were things that were taken out that I wish weren't, you know, but mm-hmm. sometimes you, you have to, you got to tell the story, not everything. You got to get rid of your babies, you, make you know, choices, yeah. yeah, you got to make choices. So unfortunately, there's some things that don't make the cut that, you know, you wish that you kind of hold on to. But that's why you have an editor that makes those choices for you. Right. So you don't get, you know, yeah. too hurt. <laughs> Otherwise, our movies would be like three hours long. <laughs> tell us about something that you wish stayed in that got cut. From All Through the House? Anything. Anything. Oh, from, oh, well, um, I did this show called Robot Combat League. Oh, that's right. You did, Which is yes. on, um, was on the Sci-Fi Channel. It's yes. actually playing in Asia right now, currently. Oh. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see all the little uh, tweets and stuff yeah. on Twitter. I'm yeah, like, yeah. yes, it's still playing. Oh, People are rooting sweet. for me. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there are definitely some things that I learned about reality that get cut off. Um, I talked on the show, if you watched the show um i talk a lot about my son yeah but i didn't only just talk about my son right. on the show and right. but the way they edit it maybe seem like oh my son i'm doing this for him <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> um there, no, there's a lot of things. A lot of my motivation and um, the fight that I drew from on that show was mm. from my brother Robert. Mm. And um, I talked about that on the show. I even brought, when I ran cross country, I I had a really tough year in my junior year in high school because that's the year that my brother passed away. And uh, I ran this one race for him. Mm. And I thought that I made like the top 10 and the top 10 get, you know, the, the honors, the patches. Um, and that's what I was looking, like, rooting for. And the whole time I was being told that I was, you know, number 10. And uh, there was mm. nobody behind me. So I, I knew I was a solid 10. Right. Um, but then when the awards came on and I was told that I was 11. And it mm. just burst, you know, like I, I was crying and bawling. But then my dad, you know, he went for a walk and he saw this little wine bottle cork and on it said, Robert, everything else was just blurred out. And all it said was Robert. Oh, and, oh, yeah. wow. and, um, and so my brother, my dad brought this to me. And as he brought it to me, a girl from my, my team came running to me and told me that I got it, that it, there was a, a mistake. Oh. And so I take this everywhere I go. And I took it with me onto the show. And they didn't show that. And that was one thing that they took out that I wish that they didn't take out because that was my drive right there. Yeah, because you're making me well up. I'm sorry. Hey, oh, man. <laughs> I'm so well, sorry. I, I, I knew but, your brother. Yes. You know, I mean, we were like close friends, but we all rode in the same bus and everything. Mm-hmm. You know, so I mean, that, yeah, that, that's, that's a beautiful, just describing what you described there. Thank you. I would have loved to have seen that on the show. Yes. I've watched it. And that's what the people well, did not get to see. Yeah. Yeah. So, and of course, I did it for my son too, as well. Sure. Um, but they sold the heck out of that part. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was like that was your, your role in the mm-hmm. show. Was, yes, you know, the that mom. was the mama. Should <laughs> yeah. I say something? Yeah. So totally. I, think it, I, I hope they can hear me from here. Um, I think it, it comes down to, and I know you know this from working with your brother. Mm-hmm. It comes down to sometimes the episode that they would have aired yours, they they focused on somebody else's, mm-hmm. you know, um, arc, yeah. if you will. So it just wouldn't work. Mm-hmm. You know, in that one, so they they it had to go. It had to go. You know what I mean? It's, it's always about does it move the story forward? Right. Exactly. You know, the story was focused on the other girl mm-hmm. who who had the battle. For instance, you know yes. what I mean? Wasn't so. like that bitch. And, and but <laughs> they also wanted to roll with the fact that I was a single mom fighting, so they wanted to keep it that I was a single mom fighting yeah. for it. So the mom if I would have. You know, if they would have aired that, it would have taken a little bit away from me just being the single mom. Yeah, fighting. you were fighting for more than one thing. It would have mm-hmm. just diluted your story exactly. a little bit. And then as they edited it, the show, you already done those fights and everything. So yes. you, and you got deep into the show. I won't ruin for everybody mm-hmm. else, but you went pretty far. And so they probably had things that they were, like you were saying, there was only so much room. Mm-hmm. And they've got this longer arc with you. And you're the mama bear arc. So uh-huh. they're like, anything that's not mama bear is going to go over, you know. I can see that happening. Yeah. Now, you know what? I'm going to go a step further and say that artistic choice was made by Robert. 
He was probably mm. like, yeah, that's a great story, but my nephew's a greater story. Yeah. Get yeah. out of the way and mm. let my nephew shine. So. I mean, and he was still there with me, so mm -hmm. there's, you know, he was there through the experience, so it's not that he didn't make the cut. He definitely made the cut, because yeah. he was what was driving me. Right, sure. So. Yeah. And you were badass in that, by the oh, way. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. <laughs> I know. Actually, it, it made me realize that I am a very competitive person mm -hmm. and for a while there I kind of um, was losing that. I mm -hmm. mean I was always competitive but I hadn't ran competitively since my son was born. Sure. You know. Yeah things so, to do. Yeah and, and having that adrenaline flowing was really exciting. I loved it. I love fighting. And yeah. I forget that I'm competitive. <laughs> and that definitely showed me. I'm like oh yeah I'm, I'm a fighter. So I'm going to get back to you and your brother are super tight. And, and you know, when a director's really doing his job, he's pulling, pulling you past your, your point of comfort mm -hmm. to get you in where you need to be. That can't be hard for Todd to do with you. No. Your trust is complete. So oh, if he yeah. says, we're going to make this choice, you just say, okay. Say, okay. Which window sill do I hang yeah. off of next, yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> or in this scene, I need you to cry. So yeah. he goes over and he holds you down and oh my God. dangles There's... the spit in front of you. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and sometimes he says the most awful things mm -hmm. to me. And I will just be like... <laughs> <laughs> I just start bawling like right then. He's like, got it. Got it. That's good. <laughs> Print it. Let's go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Could you do that with somebody who wasn't your brother? Um, yeah, because there are things that I can um, trigger. Mm -hmm. De definitely. Um, my brother's a huge trigger. Sure. It takes me just like two seconds. Like, like I really held it together just a second Yeah, ago. you did a good job. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I can learn to turn it on and off mm -hmm. and, yeah. and learn and, and can do a build up to it. So can I you trust that. the other director, though, like you do your brother, to make those big leaps? Y you have to. Yeah, okay, good. You know, you, you, you have to learn to work with other people mm -hmm. and um, you want to work with other people, sure. too. Yeah, you yeah. know, I love working with my my brother mm -hmm. um there's there's no other kind of experience that's like that if you have a sibling or you right. know, a somebody you somebody love, that you, you love that right. you work with um there's just no other experience like that but i definitely like working with other directors and other you know writers and other actors it's um it's a part of you know growing as an yeah. actor and as a as a person i mean you're you're in a collaborative business mm -hmm. you're in a collaborative venture that's that just says a lot about mm -hmm. the way that you work, yes. whether you're working in this field or, you know, if you eventually decided to write or whatever it is, you are a collaborator. Yes. And there's so many creative minds mm. out there that mm -hmm. have a lot of like, you know, interesting stories to tell that you just want to like. Like Hilliard sitting on. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not writing your song. I'm going to write the biggest zombie movie ever. Please are being oh, yeah. You just get, you know, like you, you want to be involved. So, yeah. 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 Can I ask her a quick question? Please. Sure. Can you go back? I don't mean I know you guys are kind of do, do what you do. Bit. Can you just tell us for the audience, for the actors out there who are listening to you? Mm -hmm. Some people are curious of how do you even get cast on a reality show? Oh, okay. can you can you tell them about your like yes. what that casting was like and how you even got chosen? The casting for Robot Combat League was actually very interesting in my experience because I actually auditioned for a different show. Uh -huh. oh, um, wow. I'm sure a lot of people are out there. Disclaimer yeah. here. Uh -huh. Check this out. Check uh -huh. this out. What happens is you go on an audition and you don't get it. But the casting director is like, she wasn't good for this. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, mm -hmm. now go ahead. Okay. Well, I'm actually, I'm a huge fan of the show Big Brother. Oh, okay. And oh, okay. I auditioned for that show like five times. Oh. And, you know, it, I, I, I met a lot of people, you know, throughout that process. A lot of the casting directors, um, they and remember. They would sit me. at the table and kick each other. Like, well, yeah, actually. There goes Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah. Actually, every single audition, I wore the exact same outfit. Smart. Hmm. And I wore this necklace that a friend made me that said, Ashley. <laughs> on it. It's a big, and, like, B girl necklace. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, I ended up getting, like, the same casting people, like, for three years in sure. a row. I, you know, met a lot of people, and I eventually got the call, and there, for some reason, I thought that it was Survivor. And because mm -hmm. they're, they're saying that it's, like, bigger than Big Brother, you know, because it, all the, um, Robot Combat League was, a completely different sure. you know show mm -hmm. and they didn't know which way it was going to go it's very expensive yeah. um, i know that they're working on the second season it's just there's a lot of there's a lot of cost. kinks and stuff you know that they need to work out on um things that didn't work that they're fixing but um but yeah i mean that would be my experience how on many auditions did you go on 
For Big Brother? No, for that. For this one, I was casted off of my audition tapes. And so they brought me in for a couple of, um, I guess, maybe. You branded like no other. (laughs) <laughs> I'm sure in that in those auditions you did for Big smart Brother because all we remember that is, is so brilliant. Mm-hmm. You know what? Who you know who did give her this? Ashley right. yeah. in the yeah. casting yeah. office. But they, they said like, this. They said oh, Ashley. Oh, Ashley. Ashley. That's the girl with the necklace. Yeah. 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 That's what you remember. We're talking about yeah. the girl Ashley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. with the four finger ring. That's yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was a smart <laughs> move on your point, especially if you notice. And when sometimes as an actor, you're sitting out there in the room, and there's like ten other girls who look very similar to you. Right. How are you going to stand out? And that was a smart move. And you go, okay, I bet none of these bitches are going to put on. <laughs> you know yeah. what I, mean? I yeah. still have that outfit. This mm-hmm. one outfit that I will not get rid of. Yeah. Oh, absolutely it's a, not. It's, it's a, like a pink um, leopard skin dress. <laughs> nice. <laughs> wow. That's sick. That? <laughs> and then I have like, this very colorful sign that said, said Ashley. Ashley. Yes. That's funny. So, uh, yeah, I was an actor before I realized how much I really hate and fear rejection and how insecure I actually am. <laughs> and I remember one of the things that made me realize that was my agent called me one day and said, listen, there's this show, uh, they're shooting a pilot, they're casting for it, and they need a Hispanic painter. So um, go to this casting office. It was on Sansom Street in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And... I remember, okay, I'm, I, you know what, I'm, I'm going to really prepare for this. So I went to Goodwill, and I got myself a great, I got this set of coveralls for four bucks, and it was great painter's coverall. I was so jazzed, and then I went to my mom and dad's house. My dad had, like, these old cans of paint, and I just put paint all over myself. I made myself look like a painter, took a bandana, put it on my head, put some paint on, made, made it look like I'd been working painting all day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I'm brown, we're all, we all look like we're Mexican, so I... <laughs> I said, hey, uh, I'm the best looking Hispanic painter uh, that they're going to find. So I, I ride Bart there. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, all the way there, I'm getting into character. I'm like, these fools over here think I'm, I think I'm a painter. I'm doing this right. <laughs> and then I walk into the place. It was called Bobino Casting. And I oh, walked Bobineau. in. Yeah. And there were approximately 150 dudes who were a little taller and better looking than I am. In San Francisco? And they were all wearing coveralls and had a little bit of paint on them. In San Francisco? Yeah. Oh. Wow. Really? And the show was Party of Five. Oh, okay. But, um, but this was the pilot. Nobody knew what it was going to be. And I walked in, and I'm being completely serious. I looked around, and I was like, every one of these dudes is better looking than me. <laughs> and I have my neck uh, craned up a little bit, so they're all a few inches taller. <laughs> and here I am. And then suddenly I'm looking down at my coveralls going, oh, he's sorry coveralls they're not as good as his <laughs> his coveralls are much better uh, you got a coverall everybody <laughs> besides me is getting this part yeah um but i persevered i went through the day and the only thing that i have to remember that from that erased my discomfort with the whole day was that it was my first time auditioning for a pilot and i just really you know was excited about that so that was fun but then we were all sitting there looking at each other like wow that hey nice coveralls man and, uh, you know, just waiting to go in one by one by one. And then this guy made a grand entrance like Kramer. The door flew open, like jingled because it had some things hanging on it. And this guy like slid in the room and was like, hi there. And we looked up at him and he had full on captain's hat and the whole <laughs> deal. And he said, I'm here to audition for the pilot. And 150 dudes in coveralls looked at him and burst into laughter at the same time. He was dressed like a pilot. His agent said, go audition for this pilot. And he dressed uh, like a pilot and showed up at the thing. Really? And 150 Mexicans looked at him and laughed. That's pointed at him. So I have a question. Yeah. So the, you, the way you um, decided to, to stick out, is that instinctive or is that from the experience of doing a lot of auditions? It, I think it was an Repeat the inst- question just in case they're too far away. A, a little right. bit closer, Corey. Oh. Let's scoot you on in, man. <laughs> Corey Jacobs, ladies and gentlemen. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. So um, my question is, when you decided to wear the, the, the thing and, and just be different from everyone else, is that an instinctive thing? You said, well, this is what I'm doing. Or is it from doing a lot of auditions and just trying to be remembered? I really think it was like an instinct of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm really not sure why I wanted to wear the name tag. Mm. Um 
I, I, I know. you had it. I, yeah, I had it. <laughs> it was there. A friend made it, uh-huh. and it looked pretty cool. And, you know, I thought it looked really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I came, when I did the very first audition, I, I, I was living in um, the Bay Area. And so I came here to visit my brother, and um, my friend had just made that for me, and I happened to have it. And uh, I packed just a, you know, very, very light, and I think it was just an instant move and the hmm. next audition when I decided to wear it again I thought that I'm like you know what I'm gonna go in this as if I was still auditioning like the first time and just keep because like I, I did I did hear stories of people who have made it onto the show show that um have auditioned many many times before mm-hmm. and then finally mm-hmm. make it and I'm like, well, what's, you know, one way to remember me is if I keep auditioning as if it was the first time. But she said she packed light. But packing light involved a great big bedazzled <laughs> billboard <laughs> necklace <laughs> pendant that said Ashley on it in like four inch block letters. It's like a so, so that is a, there is a strategy to, mm, the, to your method to your man. I'm yeah. really glad you asked that question, Hill, because we, you know, all this time when I thought, oh, we're going we're to meet Ashley, we're going to talk with Ashley about, I'm thinking about. You know, how do you how do you make choices? How do you get into a character and understand what your interpretation of their motivations are, all that stuff. But on a practical level, you gotta get a part. Mm-hmm. And a get lot of things that yeah. yeah, a lot of people overlook the well, I have to be able to persevere, first of mm-hmm. all, and I have to understand what this process is so that I give myself put myself in the best light. Yeah. So if you like the show, and you know you do, send us some pictures of your movies. Don't do that. Support the show. There are three ways you can support us. Number one, go to iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen to podcasts. And leave a five-star rating and review. It helps with the show metrics and helps us get better placement. Number two, visit our website, www.breakitdownshow.com. We've got an Amazon and an eBay link. Same Amazon, same eBay, you know and love, but they give us a little kickback when you get to their site from ours. And number three, leave comments about the shows that you like. We want to know what you think, how you feel. Tell us how to make the show better. We greatly appreciate it. Now back to the show. We like boobies. Well, and I also went into the audition just for the experience and uh, with no expectations. And I think that that really helped with um, calming me down and just going in there and having fun. And the people who were in the audition room, they were, they absolutely, I guess, liked me (laughs) because they would, they they loved everything I had to say. So it made, it drew me even more, made me want to talk more, made me uh, be myself. So, and every time I went in for an audition, I was actually almost working as something else. So, like, the first time I was this, and then the second time I was this, and <laughs> the third funny. time I was this. <laughs> so, it's like my, my career kept changing. Well, that just showed your versatility. Mm-hmm. That I can, really, I can really see that happening, though. You walking into the audition and them going, okay, we're looking for these things, and maybe right now she's not that thing. But we gotta remember that. <laughs> you don't you don't forget. Yeah. I always tell everybody you go in an audition, mm. you want the part, but really you shouldn't be going to get the part. You should mm. be going to show to us be how undeniable. good you are. Mm-hmm. Yes. Show us how good you are, period. Mm-hmm. I've sat in over two hundred and fifty freaking castings. Right. I'm looking at who's who's standing out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, they're not good for this, but psh, we're working on this other thing. Yeah, you, know you definitely I mean? remember something that caught your thing. eye for maybe a different character. And that's really words of advice for anybody doing anything. Mm-hmm. Go in there, showcase yourself, show your absolute brilliance at whatever, and something good. It, it will takes the you. weight off of you. Because, mm-hmm. like you said, <clears throat> when you just told that story about the guy who came in with the um, the pilot, the pilot yeah. I thought you were going to say he's the one who got the part. Uh-huh. I did too. Based on his energy, <laughs> right? Because. Because he the, did take over the room. He came in like, I got this part. Yeah. And that's what happens. The wrong part. Something, something that you and Jesse can, can definitely um, mm. relate to. Almost every part you've got, I guarantee you, you felt like you probably were going to get it. Yeah. Because if you didn't, we wouldn't believe it. Exactly. You see mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. That could have happened. Maybe that guy got the part. I didn't. Because I did go into that audition with expectations unlike you know your approach where you said i'm going to go in and have a good time mm-hmm. i'm going to enjoy the experience i'm going to see what it's all about and i'm just going to give them what i got exactly i went in there and i kind of set myself up to be crushed by the rejection because i immediately thought 
this is my shot. I'm going to get a nude scene with Nev Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, you know, another, another show ended up calling me. So yeah. from, from, I guess, that had access to those audition tapes. Or word of mouth. I don't know how they. Or they yeah. They, yeah. they cast together, or they tell people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're all on the same network. Yeah, mm-hmm. they all know each other. Yeah, and know? they all have that gift to see what they need to see, mm-hmm. and so it's like, oh, I, I know someone for this. Check out <coughs> Ashley or whatever it's going to be. And, and, and we talk. Yeah. You know, if I'm producing something and I'm casting, the casting director is literally telling me about other projects. I'm like, there's a girl that we just saw for this. Not I don't have her on story. tape, but can I bring yeah. her in for the role of it? You know, so it's going on all the time. And they wanted you a single I mean? mom who is an Amazon warrior. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they got one who, as a bonus, could fly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that story. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I just remember there were some of the um, other cast members that were like, after the first fight, I mean, I'm a huge DC fan, mm. but they were like, they just saw me turn into She Hulk. Like, <laughs> seriously, they were like, you were just like, <laughs> like just ready to fight, so um I got scared for just a moment. John, John beat his friend. pants, just yeah. a little. Uh, yeah. You were saying before, like how you, you don't try out for the part; you're really auditioning for those people almost. You're just showing them what you can do. Yeah. Really, it relaxes you because you're not like I got to get this part. Mm-hmm. Right. It takes away the weight of the hunger. And there's a lot you of know? stories where someone comes in and they try for something. And they get something else. We, like we had on uh, Tommy McElroy when he was, mm-hmm. when he, uh, he and Denzel were making uh, the group in Vogue. Mm-hmm. It wasn't going to be four chicks. It was going to be three. Be three. Chicks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and the last girl comes in late. Saw Terry Ellis and mm-hmm. said, this a, "There's this a, no way we mm-hmm. can turn her away." Yeah. Because she came in late, last one to go. They're tired and over, and she started singing, and they all paid attention. Mm-hmm. But I also heard the guy who created Modern Family. Mm-hmm. He was talking about the uh, the guy who plays the dad, mm-hmm. um, not not Ed O'Neill, but the other dad. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the actor's name is Ty something. Yeah. So they wrote that part for him because of things they had seen him do in the past, and mm-hmm. because of some small piece of work that somebody had done with him, and said, "Look, we got to let this guy loose because mm-hmm. he's going to be a force of nature mm-hmm. in the right part." And then when they started to write that part, somebody from the network said, no, I saw the other thing he was in. But the other thing that he was in called for a character to be boring. So on that show, he was boring. Mm. The thing is, the, you know, the producers had seen his brilliance elsewhere and said, no, no, we're going to fight for this guy. He's the right guy. So as much as, you know, we can speculate. I think that probably happened in the casting director's office. Mm-hmm. They were like, and you had branded yourself so solidly mm-hmm. that I'm positive the conversation happened like that. What are we going to do with Ashley? Mm-hmm. You know, and who knows? Maybe there were three or four shows. You know that you didn't get Big Brother. Mm-hmm. There may have been three other shows you didn't get where the casting directors were like, is this the one for Ashley? No, no, no. She's not not yet. Yeah. Not this I'm one. Tell, I guarantee you that's what But I'm right. Doing. Somebody <laughs> said... <laughs> Hey, Ashley. And they were like, yes, go get her. We need her for this one. Go fight robots. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> She's an Amazon warrior. This Act- can fly. Actors need to remember that the <laughs> casting directors and the producers actually want them to get the part. Mm-hmm. They actually always feel the opposite. Like, oh, they didn't like me or whatever. It's like, if you come in and kill it, we're like, yes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That You really do. You want them to do that. And you guys know because you've been on the other side, mm-hmm. on the producing side, seeing the actors come in. Yes. Which is the other thing. If you're an actor... You need to do everything you can to try to sit in mm-hmm. and read or watch or do the camera, something, anything, mm-hmm. anything to involved. see. Because then you see the mistakes that actors make so you don't make them, mm-hmm. yep. you know, and you can only get better from what And you see the great choices that You see the great actors. Mm-hmm. You see why they oh, keep getting cast. Yes. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Harrison Ford was a set builder or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he just kept, kept his eyes open, kept learning. And then, you know, when the call came... He got the biggest part anybody could possibly ever get. So a couple of times, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wasn't American Graffiti one of the most profitable movies like, ever at, at that time? time. I, I think, think they so, spent yeah. about one hundred and fourteen dollars on that movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it made like two hundred million. Yeah. I think that movie made two hundred million dollars. Wow. It's a classic. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. So I know Pete started in on this, but what can we expect uh, from you? Not just you and Todd, but from you. Where are you headed? What are you interested in? What kind of parts have you not yet had that you're looking for? 
I'm looking for that dark character. Um, I've always had that in me. I love um, darker, like single white female type mm -hmm. characters, and I'm looking for a role like that. Obviously, I'm involved in the horror community. I love horror, and mm -hmm. I love reaching out and doing, being vulnerable and being a scream queen and and all that. But I'm definitely looking for a darker role. Um, and Todd has a few things lined up for me. But when he cast me, he cast me off of what he wants to see out of me. Yeah. And not he doesn't write a role specifically Around for you. me. Yeah. Just for me. Um so like this Come next, on, Todd. This, Get next some work. <laughs> this next <laughs> movie, I am so excited about my character because it's so different from Rachel from All Through the House mm. and I'm looking forward to playing it. Oh boy. Mm. Should wow. she preface a little bit the all through the house since it's still current? You know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, yes, um, All Through the House is still current. It's doing festival run still. Um, it's showing at Days of the Dead on the 3rd at It's 11. tagging up, too. It's getting all kinds oh, of... Yeah. Tell, tell the people what it's about. Who don't know. Okay, well, it's a, um 80s horror, like, throwback, you know, slasher set during uh, Christmas time. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, I there's... love that poster. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that poster. I think that was actually a mock-up of when we were trying on the different masks for our yeah. killer. So, um, wow. yeah, that poster That's came cool. from like the beginning of, of it all uh, before <clears throat> the Santa killer. Because sometimes scared. overthinking stuff isn't the answer. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's, it's just simple. simple. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yep. And that sure. definitely was um, a picture that stood out when we were going through. I mm. think we even had, we had um, a photo shoot for a poster. <laughs> and right. None of those pictures were even ended. Yeah. Wow. So uh, we went way back. They were all trying too hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We went way back. Um, so listeners, if, you ha if you're listening on iTunes or Stitcher and haven't seen the poster, look on our website. We'll link you to the poster. We'll link you to the website. Uh, all that good stuff. It's really neat. Um, I'm sorry. Carry on, please. Oh yes. Um, well, it's um, a, it's a, a horror film that has a lot of story to it. So it's not just you know we're going to go out and kill a bunch of girls and that's it. It's it has a lot in there. It's thinking. It's not a third grade you know thing like where you, you there's a lot of thought process to it and it's really fun and um, yeah. People get killed, girls, you know, boobs, yeah, all of that. All everything you'd want in horror film is Sweet. in that movie. Come well, on, you know. <laughs> and it, you know, it's an indie You're film guys. too. Never get tired of that. No, <laughs> <laughs> we don't. But Same guys, one you saw yesterday. Easy to please. But um, you'll be able to see I don't it. know every gay guy, but every gay guy I know also loves boobs. That's that's they're just fun. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, um, the the film will be out um, video on demand and released in October. So it's a great holiday film. So expect it around the holidays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It'll and be just in time for the holidays. What it can become is like when you're sitting there around holiday time, and you know you've seen Grinch, you've seen everything else. You put that movie in, you're going to completely change everything. The mood in the room, like. Brenna and I and her nieces will, or my nieces will sit around and we'll watch a movie. It'd be great to have that at Christmas time. Because, you know, the other stuff's great, but, you know, after 50 times of seeing that same mm -hmm. movie, it'd be good to have a Turn it up room. a little bit. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, Todd, write a new edition of our new of reimagine Fatal Attraction and put your sister in it. Ooh. You would be Ooh. awesome. And we need to see that again. Because Len Close, Like that I said, that's the type ago. of character yeah. that I'm like, what Social what media and that thing, you know, have you just go crazy. No, you'd but, be awesome. Uh, side that. note, I, I'm, would it be awkward to play that kind of overly sexualized, manipulative character for today? your brother directing? No, 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 not today. I know her as an actor. I don't think mm -hmm. she'd have a problem doing it in general. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about the brother-sister dynamic. You know what? having the brother behind the camera. You know, oh, obviously there's there's some of the, the brother sister like, ooh, I don't want to see that type thing. But you know what? He completely shuts that off. He's got a job to do. So you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Like I mean there's times where he had and to go, go in and editing and like I walk into the room and my boobs are like right <laughs> up there <laughs> on the camera. But you know, there's no nastiness to it. You don't think of it you think oh, of, of it as, yeah. you know, a director, as you know, an actor, you walk into it professionally. So, yeah. um, no, I don't. I don't see any awkward. Of course, I'm not going to go in there and I'm not going to get nude or anything. Now mm -hmm. that <laughs> I will not do, and that my brother will not allow me to do if I wanted to do it. Glenn Close didn't get nude in that movie. We don't need no. that in that movie. No, you just need to be crazy. And you that know? You need a rabbit. That I can do. <laughs> <laughs> I got a plot. <laughs> that, made me frightened again. <laughs> that's the, the that's the type of character that is like a dream role. Yeah. Yes. I can't wait to see you conquer that character, 
And that sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. But the reason I say that, and I'll say it over and over and over again, is because once you've conquered that character, what comes next? What and then, next? yeah, we'll always see, you know, like, uh, I think, I don't remember who it was, some great football coach. They said, which which one of your, like, you got five Super Bowl rings. Mm -hmm. Which one is your favorite? And he said, the next one. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. That that's definitely a role that I like. Another one would would obviously be something um, heroic, something like action. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm totally. You are into, totally action. Totally into that. So that's also another type of role. I have like many things that I would like to try. So I was about to say something. You just said something interesting about that that parallel of the the, the how many Super Bowl rings they have. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. What I heard in that was. I'm still hungry. Right. right? Mm -hmm. You know right. what I mean? You get complacent. Mm -hmm. You know, trust me, I see a lot of these producers in here, here at the, at the studio, who you walk in their office and they have all kind of image and they haven't freaking sold a thing in 10 years. Right. Because they're not hungry anymore. Not hungry. They're all millionaires. They don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm still hungry. Yeah. You know? Is that stress though? Isn't that, that's like a, your hit album and then you can't get How do you follow the next? Right. Right. Is that stress or is no. it, or you think that's No, just I think me? it's because you don't follow what's going on. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm 45 years old and I still hang around a bunch of 20 something year old kids, you know, who are who know how to make movies. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so my whole philosophy is, OK, which is what I love about Todd and you guys. Right. You 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 I'm from the generation where you get together with a bunch of guys and you make a project work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have three million dollars to do it. Well, how can we shoot this thing for $100,000 yeah, with the resources we, we have, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? That's the generation we are. Where mm -hmm. These guys mm -hmm. are like, well, if we don't sell it to the network and they don't pay us to write oh, this I thing, see. we're not writing it. I'm like, well, you're going to be left in the lurch, bitch. Right. Because we got shit to do. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some, and somebody who's now we have the technology. Hungry, right, right, right. We don't have to shoot it on film anymore. So right. we yeah. have the ability to right. do it. So what I'm hearing from that thing was... They're not hungry. Right. You know, right. You know what I mean? Well, that person wants. But right. That's what I'm saying. And that's what separates the champions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, you're, you've done roles that are fun. You've done roles that were interesting. And there's something more interesting. And then when you conquer that, well, what? Let's look around see what else is more interesting, you know? And that's always fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Can you think of... Uh, specific genre that you think is way out of your type that you you don't think you'd really get a part in that mm. somebody should ought to thrust you in just just because we want to see it happen hmm. Hmm. i think one thing that people would say would be my dream role yeah i think a lot of people have they definitely haven't seen that side of me yeah um get me to a casting room and you will see it mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. <laughs> Watch the darkness of Ashley. And Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I have the, the Todd said that you really want to be a screen queen. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So let's talk about that. That's interesting because I have never met anybody who wanted to actually be. A screen. I've met some stars who became a uh -huh. screen queen, but I never met somebody who wanted. I to grew be. up. That was the aspiration in the beginning. Really interesting. Halloween is my absolutely favorite movie of all time. Okay. Um, so I grew up loving and inspiring Jamie Lee Curtis. Mm -hmm. So um, if I could be Jamie Lee Curtis, I will be <laughs> Jamie uh -huh. Lee Curtis. Like, you know, I have no problem saying that she is, you know, the person that I've looked up to mm -hmm. and wanting to be. And, you know, I also like Linda Carter, of course. Sure. But Jamie Lee Curtis um, was who I looked up to as, you know, growing up. So mm -hmm. I was always into that vulnerability and always around the horror and you know screaming and chasing mm -hmm. track runner todd mm -hmm. had to tame me down for the track running. he's like your form's too good <laughs> <laughs> you gotta run girly I'm uh -huh. like, oh what's, like this what's girly? Like, <laughs> throw in a little bit of grover i was like i had to like the killer can't catch hands. you okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Slow down. it's like oh Slow down, girl. here comes the dude with the oh yeah I'm there's no way he's catching her back to one back to one uh, yeah. <laughs> you got your head down okay all right we're gonna have to shoot this again but ashley's gone <laughs> she's somewhere down the street yeah. Oh, that, you know, there's times where I've outran the camera and I've had to like slow down for it. And like, it's it's hard to run fast but slow. Mm -hmm. You have to run fast, slow. Mm -hmm. um, so there, you know, a couple times around, you know, you eventually get the hang of it and the speed of it. But um, 
but yeah, running is definitely, I love the chase. I've always loved the chase. I mean, when I'm running track or when I was younger, I was always thinking something was chasing me, you know, something mm-hmm. scary, like, you know, yeah, I pretend. Just because that's fun. Yeah, like even with tag, you know, all the, everybody else would be, you know, like zombies, mm-hmm. you know, and I, yeah. I, I can't get eaten, you know, I can't, right. mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't become one of them. So I just, you know, run along and just play that way. So yeah, let your imagination yeah, take you to a different place, yes. more fun. That is a, uh, that's really cool because I have uh, been on camera running and, and I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know, like you look at the shot and you go, Dude, what the hell are you really? doing? That's how you run? Yeah. Yeah. Your hand is in a sandwich shape. Did you want to have a sandwich in your hand? Yeah. Yeah. Did you really want us to be walking? Yeah. yeah. That's why there's stunt people, though, right? Stunt drivers. I'll say. Because they can focus specifically on, you know, just driving this speed, this mm-hmm. distance from the camera. Right. But, you know, the actor's got to make it that act. good. Yeah. But like Hill said, sometimes you got to make a movie with what you got in your pocket. That's true. Movie, you mm-hmm. know, so. Like Sean hey. Cunningham, where he's like, in this scene, Hang on, let me make it up right now on the spot. Yeah, yeah. you know, because that's what he had to do. That's right. That's right. But see, that's why there's so many. You guys remember on Todd's episode I did on my show, I was also trying to encourage him that there are ways to do it cheap right. and still keep a lot of union actors and all these other mm-hmm. things you can do. Yeah. You know, because it just gives you more credibility. Right, right, right. right. So to have that level. Just of because you're making present. it cheap doesn't mean everything has you have to, to be. compromise everything. Yeah, you can, you yeah. can, and you should be fighting for that. Right. You know what I mean? Every time, every every mm-hmm. show, every movie, whatever, he should be saying, we're not doing it unless it's, you know, as you grow, as you keep moving forward. You right. Know? Mm-hmm. Well, Alfred Hitchcock said, the worst enemy of cinema is a lack of limitation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That'll help you not make a movie right there. Mm-hmm. Right. At some point, you have to make some choices. Yep. I hear a lot of your brother's influence in what you do. Yes. <laughs> It's it's incredible because you know I, I knew him growing up. Obviously, you did too. But like on the bus, he was trying to shape me. He's like, "Oh, you got to do that." I'm like, I, "I'm just going to the chemistry class, man." Yeah. He's like, "I've got fake blood," and I'm like, hey, "You know, what am I supposed to do with fake blood right now? We're on a bus. Yeah. Does it taste like ketchup? It's not a sandwich." <laughs> oh yes, we were, we had the recipe down to a yeah. tea before you can buy it. What was it? Oh, you were making your own corn syrup. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, always, yeah. he was always had his, he was within arm's reach of blood at all times. Mm-hmm. And we had it like in different, <laughs> different colors for blood different, with him. you know, <laughs> You never things. know. When yeah. I can shoot something, I'm going to bring blood with me. Yeah. <laughs> always. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It, but it, it's funny to hear, like this, to rewind back in my head and hear all the things that he must have been there with. You guys built, you know, a movie empire. The two of you together, just constantly working together and shaping. I mean, it's it's really cool to hear and see, you know, for me personally, just because I've, I've, you know, hanging out with Todd and knowing Todd and being controlled into roles by Todd, you know, Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. It's really cool. But I'm super glad that you guys are in this point now where you get to realize this stuff. It's neat to see. I mean, thanks. And now they're they're being paid for now. Yeah. Uh Yeah. Uh They're getting recognition. Definitely fun and, you know, feel like it's um, finally our time to get out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, we wish we could have gotten it done sooner, but, you know, we had other things. Like you I be ready. was running, you be I went ready. to school, yeah. I got, you know, my bachelor's degree in psychology. Good for you. Which is why I'm waiting for that psychological Oh, boy. Care. Yeah. <laughs> psychological thriller. That's what you need. Um, yeah, and, you know, I ran track forever, and at, at that point, Todd was down here doing his thing, and the timing, you know, it just was great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right on. Back to the timing. That's what mm-hmm. we were talking about in the right. beginning. <laughs> and the preparation for the mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Yeah. And just having that experience now, too, that I can also feed off of. Yeah. So. What do you think if your son says, Mom, I want to act? Go for it. He was in all through the house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, in fact, he worked with Jessica. Of course he was. <laughs> <laughs> and so let me tell you, he, he, he loved working with Jessica. He's very sweet. <laughs> He's a very good little boy. Yes. A little yes. flirt. Huh? Um, uh, no, he definitely has those <laughs> um, the characteristics yeah. about him that uh, I, I would it, I wouldn't say no. Yeah. But you know, I'm not pushing it either. Yeah. So um, it has to be his thing. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely the artistic endeavors have to be your child's thing. They can't be your thing that mm-hmm. you try to live out through your child. Yeah. You know, because there has to be. There's such a, there needs to be the type of desire that you have, that mm-hmm. Todd has, in order to just survive this thing, let yeah. alone thrive in it. Exactly. But 
you know, if uh, if it's their thing. And I knew I wanted to be a part of it, too, with Todd yeah. when we were growing up. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I have some other brothers, too, and they're all older than me. But um, they're, the brother that's closest in age with me, I was always getting threatened that he was going to take my part. <laughs> in fact, he did take one of my roles, and he was wearing my dress with these clip-on earrings, you know, yelling, no, wow. Lisa, don't go. That's funny. So, you know, there, there's times where that's, you know, right then I'm like, I'm listening to Todd. Mm-hmm. I'm listening to him. He's a leader. That's good. You need to be mm-hmm. a leader in, in this business to be the director and the producer. Mm-hmm. and the, mm-hmm. You have to be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he's not afraid to cut your sister off. Mm-hmm. You know, he... <laughs> He got something wow. else to play my part. <laughs> wow, it was a lesson. Now you learn, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. learned it when you were six. Didn't you? I, yes. <laughs> I sure this did. This is a competitive <laughs> business, little yeah. tiny ass. I sure right. did. And that film, too, I, I mean, it was filmed on VHS, mm-hmm. but that movie, I still, it sticks with me. It's, it's so. I mean, from what I remember, I mean, I was young, obviously, but I remember it being very scary and terrifying. Mm. Um, it, it obviously was shot to a point where it looked really pretty. <laughs> and, you know, um, but yeah, we we had, um, he had all of his friends involved with it and they all loved it. But yeah, it was very scary in, you know, my six-year-old mind. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Well, thank you for being with us. Well, thank you Are for you, having me. Yeah, that was terrific. I, I think um, we're going to link everything we can link of you on awesome. our show page so everybody can see. And by all means, everybody, uh, take a look. Poke around. You see a lot of fun stuff and watch the stuff and look out this holiday season for mm-hmm. All Through the House. All Through the House. Yeah. And then that next year. Yeah. Soon. Ashley Mary Nunes. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys.